Hey everybody, Charles Ford, HumbleMechanic.com, back to talk about more failed Volkswagen parts. Today, we're talking failing heater cores. There is nothing like the feeling on a cold morning after you've been driving for about 10 minutes to roll that dial to the red and turn your blower fan on and realize that the air you expect to be hot is actually cold. And one of the reasons that could be happening is a failing heater core. It's actually not the only thing a failing heater core can result in, but it's probably the most common. So today, we're going to be checking out how the heater cores fail. But before we get into the show, let's talk about the sponsor of the day, which is Deutsch Auto Parts. These guys are the Volkswagen Audi parts experts. Awesome service, incredible pricing, a ton of really great DIY videos as well. So check them out at shopdap.com. They also have a really great Q&A show that they do. You can hit them up on most social media platforms using the hashtag ShopDAP. So I felt like doing a heater core video at this time of year was the perfect time of year to do it, mainly because this is the time of year where we really do the most either repair or maintenance on heater cores. I think last week at the shop we did five heater cores on different generation Volkswagens, most of them being Passats. All right, so what is a heater core? Well. It's kind of like a little radiator. It even looks like a little radiator. This lives on most vehicles inside the car, just behind the dashboard if you're the driver or if you're the vehicle in front of the dashboard. And this is one of the main components that allows us to have hot air in our cars. And it replaced that open flame crazy thing that a lot of Volkswagens used to have. So luckily, no more open flames just out in the elements. We have a device like this that allows us to have nice hot heat in our car. So how does it work? Well, it lives in the vehicle a lot like this. This one is out of a B5.5 Passat. So if I were sitting in the driver's seat, I would be about right here. This is kind of in the middle of the dash, right up against the firewall. And what happens is coolant is pumped into the heater core. It goes through the channels of the heater core and out the other side. While that's happening, our blower motor is blowing air across the heater core, across the fins. That cool air is actually pulling the heat out of the coolant and heating up the air and cooling down the coolant. Now we take that hot air, we direct it throughout the air box and in turn throughout the cabin of the vehicle. And that allows us to have that nice toasty feeling inside our car in the wintertime. It does function exactly like a radiator does in front of your vehicle. It's just that now we're taking that hot air and we're using it to create a more comfortable environment inside of our car. Now there's two main ways that these fail. Either they clog or they leak. Let's talk about the leak first. It's actually the least common way that we're seeing right now on heater cores failing. Generally, when a heater core leaks, you're gonna know one of two ways. One, your coolant level is gonna start dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping. And two, you may get either a wet floorboard or actually a really weird, sweet, sticky smell inside of your vehicle. There are some car manufacturers that use a bittering agent inside the coolant, like Ford I think uses a bittering agent, so it doesn't have quite the same sweet smell. But if you open up a bottle of G12 or G13, you'll really know that this is what coolant smells like. So we may get a puddle of coolant, we may get that really weird smell inside of our vehicle. That's just one failure where the heater core leaks, and we have to take the dashboard out and put a new heater core in. The more common way, at least from what we've been seeing, is the heater core actually clogging. Now, this isn't really a failure of the heater core necessarily. This is actually more of a breakdown of the coolant in the vehicle. But since the repair ends up being something to do with the heater core, we're gonna go ahead and include it in failures of the heater core. What happens is the coolant breaks down and it'll actually settle in this bottom tray. So again, remember the, the heater core is set like this. All that sediment and junk will settle down at the bottom and that'll actually prevent the coolant from flowing through the radiator or through the heater core, then our air can't pull the heat out. We then in turn have ice cold air, even when we have our heat set on high. It can actually also cause, get this, a check engine light. On the newer common rails, there are EGR temperature sensor faults that will trip because the heater core is clogged. It's basically a difference in temperature points in the engine. It expects to see a temperature drop going across the heater core, because again, remember, we're pulling some of that heat out of the coolant, and when it, does, when it sees these varying temperatures, it trips the check engine light for, again, I think it's an EGR cooler or EGR temp sensor fault. But the most common one is no heat. This was incredibly, incredibly, incredibly common 
on the B5, the B5 and a half Passats. That's probably the Volkswagen that I've seen have the most heater core issues, but it's not the only one because I'm pretty sure way back when, this was even before my time, the Corrados had a recall on replacing the heater cores. How do we diagnose the heater core as the point of failure? First thing we need to make sure our vehicle is up to temp. We also need to make sure that our thermostat is working properly. Thermostat failure is a topic for another video because there's a lot that goes into thermostats failing, uh, especially on the more modern cars. Again, like this failing, we can get a check engine light. But we need to make sure we have good coolant, we have good coolant flow. A lot of times what I'll do, especially on these, is being very careful I'll take and I'll pull the hose just a little bit off to see if I have pressure or see if I have flow. I wouldn't recommend that for the average DIYer because it can be very dangerous. Again, this is going to be hot pressurized coolant, so we wanna be incredibly careful. So we need to make sure we have good coolant flow. We need to make sure our thermostat's working properly. We need to make sure that if we meet those criteria, now we can actually focus on the heater core. What we can do is take a temp gun and hit the two hoses, and they actually should be different. You do wanna see a temperature drop of coolant. Remember, we're pulling the heat out of the coolant in order to heat the cabin. There are other checks that we need to make sure we do if we're only focused on not having heat. We wanna make sure our blend doors are working correctly. Again, coolant flow, thermostat working properly are all very important to make sure that we have heat in our vehicles. Now, the big question, is this a DIY? Well, this is generally not the easiest part out there to replace. Some of the newer vehicles like the Passat that I mentioned that will trip a check engine light, they're actually quite a bit easier. You can get to it without taking the dashboard out, but this one came out of a B5.5 Passat. That one you're pulling the dash. You're basically taking everything from the driver to the firewall out of the vehicle, or at least away from all of that in order to get the heater core out. You'll see here the way that, uh, that we did it at the dealership. We pulled the whole entire dash. We didn't take the entire dash apart. We just pulled the whole entire dash away from the firewall, from the bulkhead, and we're able to sneak the heater core in and out and do the repair that way, which is a great way to do it because as these cars age, you know, the, the newest B5.5 is 10 years old right now. So as these cars age, the plastic gets really weak. It gets really brittle. And the less stuff of that we have to touch, really the better off we are. So for most people, replacing this is not a DIY, but repairing it might just be. We can actually flush these heater cores and that fixes almost all of them. There have been some that flush and flush and flush and flush and flush, and no matter how many flushes you do, it just ain't happening. It's not coming unclogged. Some things that you can do that'll really help the flush process along. Using CLR works fantastic. That helps break down some of that grime, some of that gunk inside the bottom tray of the heater core and allows you to pressurize it and push coolant or push water is generally what I do through the heater core. There are some really great videos on how to flush the heater core on YouTube, but here's how I do it. We can take the CLR, we can pump it in, and we can let it sit for a few minutes, and then we can pump it out just basically using a garden hose. Now at the dealership, we're very responsible and make sure that we trap any coolant and we don't let it out into the environment. And I highly, highly, highly recommend if you're doing this at home, make sure that you are not pumping coolant into the waterways, down the street, into the storm drain, all those things that I feel like I shouldn't have to say, make sure we're being very responsible with this used coolant that we're flushing out of our heater core. Now it may take you three or four times in order to flush that and get all that junk. You'll see little pieces of debris like you see here. This picture actually came from one of these other heater cores that was clogged. I broke the bottom cap off so you could see just how much junk gets clogged up in the bottom of these heater cores. And that's the stuff that we want to flush out. A lot of times simply garden hose pressure with clean water will get most of that out. I have used compressed air, which you want to be again extremely careful with. The more pressure we put through this heater core, the more likely we may be causing a leak down the road. So we wanna be extremely careful with doing that. Flushing it with a garden hose and CLR is really the best way I've found to get these heater cores flushed and clean. Now, one thing you can also do to sort of prevent this kind of thing from happening in the first place is make sure that our coolant is of good quality. We're using proper coolant. We're flushing our coolant every 50, 60, 70, 80,000 miles in order to prevent these deposits and prevent this debris from happening in the first place. So there you have it, the heater cores and how they fail on Volkswagens and really on Audis as well. So if you guys have any questions or comments, please post it in the comments section below. Hey, if you liked the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You guys can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at humblemechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and obviously right here on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.
No beer of the day. I haven't had a beer of the day in weeks. Uh, might have to have two on the next show, I guess.